this is the final week of subconscious. And remember, as a special topic, I've been teaching you all. Remember, I come in every now and then. I teach my special topic every now and then. Well, these Think and Grow Rich Wednesdays have been special topics. That's why you've been getting all these trainings. The trainings. Now, what I want to do now is I want to go a lot of book knowledge, and we'll talk about it. And since all of you are talkative folk, let's see if we can talk our way into stuff. Okay? The subconscious. It receives and files sense impressions or thoughts, regardless of nature, positive and negative. The subconscious. It receives it receives and files sense impressions or thoughts, regardless of their nature, positive or negative. That was me. I didn't post the T. The I. Okay. It receives files, everything I just read. Someone tell me what that means, your subconscious. To me, I believe it, that means that everything that happens to you, if it's something extremely positive or extremely negative, your subconscious files that. It receives, added with your emotion, it receives and it files that particular thing. So anything that comes up that reminds it of that particular thing, like you said, regardless of their nature, positive or negative, it it triggers something. All right. Unmuted. Oh, well, you're, I mean, who's that? I mean, oh, okay, got it. I've been talking my whole time. Yes, you did a good job. You went deeper than intended, <clears throat> which is good. This simply means your subconscious is obedient, Jerome. It's filing stuff, good or bad. Do you understand? This ain't, ain't nobody arguing about this. It's obedient. You put, Earl Nightingale says, you put nightshade in it, you're going to get back some nightshade. That's poison. You understand? You put poison in it, you're going to get poison. You put fruit in it, you're going to get fruit. Do you understand? It's just, it's just it is what it is. Nothing else. Let's see if we can keep going. Final week with subconscious. You may voluntarily plant in your subconscious mind any plan or purpose which you desire to translate into its physical or monetary equivalent. Right out the book. I don't know what page I've been taking notes for years. But it's in the beginning. If you you find it, yeah, it's it's in the beginning. You may voluntarily plant in your subconscious. Okay, you got it? Right there. I knew it was in the beginning. It's on the, what page? 229. 229. Very beginning. beginning. Grace has a highlight of this. Let me see that book since I got my mic hot. Right there. I like it when you do it right there, right there. All right. What you are going to do is explain this to me. Y'all ready? I'm getting ready to wake y'all up. Explain to me, you may involuntarily plant. This part right there. What does that mean? Someone tells me, just you may voluntarily plant. Someone tell me what that means. You may voluntarily plant. Someone just tell me what it means. Hello. Can you say it again? Oh, I wasn't listening. <laughs> yeah, no problem. No problem. We got you. We, we, I heard Chantel and Talisha. Okay. You may voluntarily plant. Daryl's gonna get in there and say y'all. You may voluntarily plant. What does that mean? Go ahead, Daryl. Save us. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Daryl over here trying to save Daryl. <laughs> you know, I should get <laughs> off, right? 
but uh, the way I see it, guys, is is for me, it's either positive or negative. You voluntarily allow things in your subconscious mind by what we do or do not do. Uh, the conscious mind, obviously, is supposed to be that gatekeeper to keep us from allowing things in. But if you're trying, in my opinion, if you're trying to put something positive in, you can do um, self, well, um, not self, you know, positive affirmations is what I'm getting at. So you can speak to yourself about what you want. You know, you can do that in sleep. You can do auto suggestions. You know, a lot, oftentimes I'll put my earplugs in at night when I fall asleep, turn them down low. And then that, because once my subconscious or my mind goes into theta, then it starts to receive information. Well, okay. <laughs> it is a vibrational state in the subconscious mind when it is both relaxed and allowing and will continue to process problems, but it is the most fertile soil. Speak, speak that church language. Oh, okay. That fertile soil. All right. Good ground. So that good ground. All right. <laughs> that's, that's an old church language. Yeah. Good ground. All right. So, An Antonio, are you saying then this is intentional? This it's an intentional I, action on your side on I'm, our behalf. I'm gonna hang my hat here. Right now, it's intentional because that's the second thing that I read to you in your hearing, old Baptist preacher talk. Mm -hmm. The first thing I read in your hearing is it receives file senses impressions thought regardless of their nature, positive or negative, regardless of their nature. So not only is it intentional, but it can be unintentional, regardless of their nature. Not only can it be unintentional, it could be good, it could be bad. Regardless, your subconscious mind, as the dean of motivation, Earl Nightingale says, it's obedient. He once asked a man a question. I can't remember the man's name, but it's, it's, it's at the very beginning of The Stranger's Secret. What's the problem with men? And the man said, well, men simply do not think. Boy, is that the truth. We're going to break this down. This is one of these nerd things I'm about to do, we want to break down this sentence and its structure so you can understand what is right with your life and what is right with your life. Ah, who is taking me to say wrong? There is no wrong. What is right with your life and what is right with your life. Some of you have just planted all the right things that do not serve you. Mm, 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 mm. None of you have the wrong stuff in your life. You have what you actually wanted and planted and truly desired. And the ground is so obedient. It said, sure, Daryl, take this. This is what you wanted. And you said, yes, that's what I want. And you know what? You found the ATS Business University. You're about to be a very filthy rich man. Good job. Or you took that, Antonio, and you was bulking up. You was at 225 solid, all the solid muscuses. You was doing all the good jobs. And then the dog on Reese's peanut butter cup. And little decision after little decision. You do know every, 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 every time my jaw clenched and chewed that was a decision see some see 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 some of y'all missing me i didn't say every cup was a decision every breakage of each cup was a decision and now i have the stomach that i actually wanted <laughs> see now i'm getting rid of the stomach now right but i have to admit that the body I have is a reflection of my mind. You needed that with grace? 
All right, go ahead, go ahead, and go ahead and say something. <laughs> Grace just gave me a fist bump. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I told Diara and Antonio, we were in an office a lot, but I told them, man, this is the largest weight that I've ever been. And of course, they was like, girl, you all right? What are you talking about? But for me, when you were little almost all your life, and then you, you gained as much weight as I have, you know, I was like, wait, you know, this is not what I want. But in actuality, it was because when I keep eating wing stuff and PL chains and drinking Coke and <laughs> not doing what I know I should be doing, <clears throat> eating healthier, I got the body I wanted. So, yeah. Well, I'm here to rub in your face. Y'all you, you, ever had a fiberglass? You, you ever sat on a fiberglass bench on a on a baseball field? It's the benches that make you itch, or you you grab that pink passive styrofoam. It's not styrofoam, but you know I'm gonna call it styrofoam so some of you can understand the cotton candy oh, stuff uh, in between the wall. Oh, uh -huh. Installation. In yeah, installation. Okay, all right. So all you, all y'all, some old folks. All right, there's some installation. Okay, <laughs> that's, the, that's the first time I ever heard that word. And then it took until video games came out, so I heard no CDs came out with Microsoft Windows. So you had to installation something else. Up until Microsoft Windows the installation was that pink stuff you put in the wall. <laughs> Anywho. It itches, don't it? Yeah. So I'm about to rub the itchy stuff in your face. Because every last one of you have the body you want. And you love it. And it's your greatest desire. Hurts, doesn't it? Me too. Me, me too. Everybody. Let's, let's do this again. Let's do this again. I took you too fast. I took you too fast. No, 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 no. Some some people are still no, no. Everybody gave me. Well, you, 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 y'all caught because y'all with me all the time. But some let let's 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 wrench around and wrench it off. Okay, we're gonna go back to our original quote. It receives foul senses, impressions, regardless of nature, good or bad. Can the ground yield you seed that you did not plant? No. Jerome, can you can you ever be hurt by something you've never said? No. Okay, they see on for me. No. Good, good. Some one of my old bosses used to tell me this all the time. One of my old bosses used to tell me this all the time. He he was a British guy. And Little Caesars. And in fact, actually, he taught me more about business than anybody, any school ever did. <laughs> this is how I got so fiscally responsible. And he's just saying, No, Tony, I've never been hurt by anything I've never said. Because the fastest way to get hurt as a store manager is to say something wrong to the people in the store. <laughs> Y'all ain't hurt me. <laughs> So the, the fastest way to get hurt is to run your dog on mouth when it felt good to cuss somebody out. You notice I've never been hurt by something I've never said. Well, try that. Have you ever yielded from the field what you did not plant? All right, Pam Norris, can you plant a banana and get an orange? No. no? Is that I grow bananas here. We can't. You can't you do grow, that. You, I got them in my backyard. Right. So, she got them in her backyard. It's that Maui life. In her backyard. She got some doggone bananas. Yep. And if she walk out there today, they will not actually be oranges. Actually stop. So they, I can't say which one they're today because it's wintertime, right? So it's getting ready to be harvest now. They're springing up now. That's a whole different lesson. Whole different, I would love to stay on that lesson for a while. Hopefully, we can come back to it with a question. What I need for you to understand. King James Version says, since I like to be all of the king of the James, every fruit produced like that of its kind. 
everyone. Everyone. What does that mean, Grace? When you, whatever you plant is coming up, a whole lot of it. The same thing. Same thing. Can I, how many of y'all went to jail before? Come on, I'll raise my hand up first. It's all right. You been in jail? How the fuck are you? <laughs> nah. So I need to talk to my, <laughs> I, need, I need to talk to my real jail folks, okay? And in and, and, and jail, depending on how long you've been in there, but in jail, we, we, okay, three days, that's fine. In, in prison. Seven years. Seven, all right then, that's Callaway, ain't it? All right then, so Callaway, he finna the field. He finna the field me on this. In prison, we say, I want that same thing back. So if I give you two suits, I'm telling you, I want the same thing back. Okay, Tempest was called it, keep that same energy. That means if I gave you two suits, what you gonna do is you gonna give me back four suits. The two suits I gave you, and I want the same thing back. I want 100% return on investment. Callaway, am I doing all right? Yep. And I don't care if it's in Thailand or not. Jail is jail. I don't, <laughs> I don't care That's where the it's at. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. So I want the same thing back. What a prisoner is telling you is, of the same thing I gave you, you going to give me back equal of the same kind, plus I'm going to need that same investment back. Take it out of prison, put it into you. Aww. Yes, yes, honey, yes. It, com well, it comes back. The same way you planted it, Jerome, but also in what is called the principle of multiplication. If when Pam Norris plants a banana, correct me if I'm wrong, Pam, you get back one banana. Uh -uh. Go ahead, go ahead. Let me, let me hear you correct me out loud. Let me hear you correct me out loud. I get about 40 <laughs> on, a on one store. Did y'all hear that? Uh -huh. Did y'all hear that? That's the principle <laughs> of multiplication. Not only is she going to get from the ground the same banana, but the, the ground is like a prison inmate. You know what I'm saying? Scared of Pam Norris and her ability to plant. So the ground is like, listen, I know you a hard master, and you, you, watch this here. Okay, <laughs> yeah. great stuff, I'm going. I know you a hard master, Pam, and you reap where you did not sow. So what I did was I gave you more back than what you gave me because I didn't want you, I didn't want to not give you nothing so you could say you fool. Take from her that banana and give it to somebody else. What, wh where am I at? Somebody tell me where I'm at. Uh-huh, uh-huh, the story of the talent. Okay, then, all yeah. right. Parable of the talent. Yeah, and, and, and like Antonio, to? you're right, because every time our banana trees blossom, it's more than we can eat. We're, we give it away in bags to all our friends because we couldn't consume it. Even if we freeze some of it, we still have too much. So we have to give it away or else it would all go bad. So we do that on a monthly basis. We have to give it away yeah. or it'll go bad. Can right. I turn that around on y'all? Can I turn it on you, Jerome? Abundance <laughs> is meant to be shared. If you don't share it, the universe is going to make it go bad on you. How many of y'all got some income taxes already bad now? They ain't got nothing to show for it. Come on. You can wrench around and wrench it off. Ain't nobody going to bite. Come on. You ain't got nothing to show for it. Hey, Tony, you better stop, boy. You know you. you, know you. <laughs> ain't got nothing to show for it because you Come didn't share that abundance. Mm. Can, you, can you still hear me? Because my, my thing reset. Okay. Because you ain't, you ain't, what you did is you didn't share. 
Mm. Is that fair? Yes. You get you get them same paper tags every April. Every April, because you didn't share. Because you didn't start it from ATS Business University, and now you don't want to make the ninety-seven percent rich. You just wanna you wanna do a pyramid scheme and make three percent rich. You ain't wanna let Daryl Dillahunter use his skill set. You so selfish, Antonio. You want to do it all by yourself. You ain't got no team, and the team you do have, you don't let them talk. Now, let's say I behave like that. All of you who are actually leaders, you wouldn't even be here. I should now borrow from Andy Stanley. Andy Stanley says it best. A leader who will not listen to his people will eventually be surrounded by people with nothing to say. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> it's one of the greatest leadership quotes I've ever heard. A leader who will not listen to his people will eventually be surrounded by people who have nothing to say. What is Andy Stanley saying? All the Darrells, they gone. They gone where they could be heard. And the only people left is the people who don't mind if they die. I wish I had somebody. One of the most comfortable places in the world is a dead organization. Because we know I ain't going to challenge Dave Taylor. I'm not going to ask Dave Taylor to do nothing. We dead. Bro, get here when you get here. We'll start when you get here. Y'all been in places like that? They don't start on time? It's crazy. We get complimented from starting on time as if that's talent. <laughs> That's not a talent. It's just that y'all so used. <laughs> y'all so used to average that when someone actually does something normal, you're like, holy crap, they start on time. Starting on time is normal. You was born on time, you're going to die on time. Abundance is meant to be shed. That old pair of Norris said, man, well, I got to give it away. But you know what we do with our subconscious, Deanna, Chantel, Pam Norris, I'm going to change the name, Paul Norris, I'm about, I'm about to speak bad, I don't want to put it over you. Paul Norris says, y'all don't look like me. You, you, you. You, you folk ain't my color. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a system of pressure around these bananas. Are you from Maui? Yes, you can come. Oh, wait a minute. We don't take no people outside of Maui. Immigration is stealing all our bananas. Number one, watch how, watch how I sound like the world. Now that we don't want none of y'all from outside us, on this banana and don't forget the banana free <laughs> don't forget the banana's free right how can Pam even create a law around what comes out the ground for free and then she said I'm going to call the police to put you in a jail for stealing something that's free. That don't even make sense in itself. Then she say, you know what? Y'all don't look like me. Y'all don't come around like me. And then all the people who do look like her say, well, can we get those bananas? And then you know what she say? Oh, excuse me, not she. You know what he say? Paul? Paul Nord? But wait a minute. It's too much of y'all. Y'all taking all my bananas. You didn't work like I worked. And since I used to work hard years ago, pay attention. Now I'm going to write laws so I don't have to work hard no more. And I'm going to make it harder for you to get these bananas. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what happened 
what happens is, since I don't want to work hard no more, I'm going to protect my bananas by keeping you away from them. It's harder to get these bananas now. You used to just be able to plant them. Now you got to go down to City Hall. Come on, I'm talking real talk. Yeah. You got to get a permit. You got to get a permit to plant. You got to get your seeds inspected. Then you got to plant in an inspected area. And by the way, all these levels, there's a fee at every level. Because our subconscious has created this existence that we live in right now. And that is why you are oppressed. Because you're perfectly okay with 40,000 kids dying a day from hunger. No, I'm not okay with that. Did you do anything about it? No, you're okay with it. Deanna, you had a question? No, uh, answer on your mind. I, it was actually about the planting. Like, do you have to, you actually have to go through that process to start a garden in your backyard? Thank you very much, Mitchell Mike. Which process? The process that I made up about all them permits and stuff? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not a made up process. That's what you call government. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not made up. <laughs> you actually have to. First off, how can you plant in a backyard when you rent in that property? Number one, you got to ask the landlord. I wish I had somebody. Wow. If you ain't asked the landlord, if you ain't got written, expressed intent from the landlord, you can't plant no garden back here. But I just want to be healthy. Yeah. If you want to be healthy, fix your credit for 20% down. Look at all these steps. Fix your credit for 20% down. Go ahead, get you a house, maintain it, fix the garden, get your garden there, and then you can plant. It's free. Look, y'all, when everybody was in Africa, because the world started in Africa, not a historian on planet Earth would disagree with you. I got you, BJ. Not a historian on planet Earth would disagree with you. Between two rivers, actually, it's kind of three rivers, but we'll let that go for right now. And the Fertile Crescent, and what is now, no, that's, that's all fact. And Fertile Crescent, and the Fertile Crescent, what is now known as Saudi Arabia or Iraq, is things that you would know it as, okay? That's where the world started. We know it. Every historian knows it. Pangea, blah, 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 between two rivers, Mesopotamia, you need water for life. This is all fact. When those Africans that we made nations out of late wanted to get some food, they did not go to Walmart. I know that sounds weird. They just picked it. And if it grew on your property, property, you would barter and trade it. Hey, I got this for free. Would you like this one? But sure, I need this. Let's switch. But then the subconscious of mankind said, wait a minute, I'm Paul Norris. I'm Paul of the Norris clan. And I'm not, it's, it's too many of y'all. I'm not about to share what I worked hard for. Come on now. Some of you are like, I would never do that. Really? Because if I ask you to raise your taxes right now, what you going to say? <laughs> Come on now. See? See? You see how you see see how righteous you thought you were, but one is that one is that raising your taxes, that boom kicked in there. Didn't didn't take long at all. Well, I don't mind paying my fair share of taxes. Great, pay for everybody. Wait, wait a minute now. I'm, what I'm attempting to do here before I call on BJ is I'm just showing you what the subconscious mind has done to the world. The subconscious mind, how many of you have worked for someone and they wouldn't train you because they didn't want you to pass up they, them and get their position. So you had to watch and learn only to pass them up anyway. Yeah. Right? There you go. Subconscious told them there's lack. And if you take their job, they won't have none the most. If they train you, they'll lose, lose their job. job. That's what they said. That's in the subconscious. 
let's 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 read it. You may voluntarily plant. You can stop right there. They voluntarily planted. I'm not gonna help that man, please. Now, if it do me like that, I don't like him anyway. Why you don't like him, girl? I don't know, but I don't like him. Something about him. Don't even know why. Go ahead, BJ. No, I was gonna uh, speak on speak on that thing about planting a garden in your backyard. See. I dug up all the grass in my front yard and try to plant some stuff. I figured I ain't need no grass, so I was just gonna plant. But then uh, the, the neighborhood, society, all, all them people who talk about saying, "No, you can't do that to the front yard. You gotta have a certain amount. You know, I gotta have grass." But anyway, that, that's kind of off topic of what you was, was saying. But uh, no, that's not off topic. That's on topic. We call that what is it? not homeowners insurance. It's a homeowners, homeowners association. association. Yeah, I'm like, what I need grass for? I can plant. But they wanted to look look a certain kind of way. I was kind of upset about that. But you know, my mama don't. You know, but why? Why they wanted to look a certain way? Because they wanted to be pretty? No, nope, that ain't what they're thinking about. They're thinking about their property value. There you go. If one house goes down, all our houses go down. So let's create imaginary rules from our subconscious to stop sharing. Now, let's get back to this body fat. I'm coming out to everybody. Uh-uh, uh-uh, I, I, I ate 500 calories yesterday. I'm working on it. So y'all gonna have to deal with me. Your body is what your mind is like. Mm, 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 mm. That hurt, didn't it? I, I promise you, I promise you scientifically, Philosophically, neurologically, I, <laughs> I think that's it. Or from a dietitian perspective, I don't even know how to say that word. I know. <laughs> okay, and you let, let, get, let, let me see that. Let me see. Grace held up one of Daryl's favorite books just now. He said, I know, I know. I promise you that your mind gave you the body you thought you deserved. I heard them. Go ahead. Yeah, I have it. Does that also reflect in how your home looks, how your car looks, how you dress? Of course, what you eat, how you treat others, all of that also reflects in that way as well. Absolutely correct. Aces all over. Gold fish crackers for you. Yes, you even get the graham crackers after that. After the nap. <laughs> yes. The honey bears, too, the little honey teddy bears. I'm serious. Everything flows from your mind, including that belly fat. Let me let this bodybuilder talk. Go ahead, Dave. I got you unmuted. Oh, hold on. Put up. You got, hold on. You, we can't hear you. You don't have a mic. Check your microphone. Hold on, you hit. Say something now. Can you hear me now? That got you. Okay. Um, well, something I, I want to say, kind of off topic a little bit. Um, I, I, okay, hold on. Try to get close. Actually, wherever your daughter is talking at, she sounds super clear, and you sound low. So do whatever she's doing. <laughs> Maybe your right headphone. Yep, that's it. Your right headphone is your your mic. Oh, can you hear me now? Now take it off and talk it talk it like a mic. <laughs> can you hear me now? Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Yes. Um, you you're absolutely correct because. Um, not only pertaining to the body, that pertains to how we treat other people also because how we feel is, is, is the reflection of, you know what I'm saying, what we put out. And mind you saying that because I am a bodybuilder and uh, I've, these last couple of weeks I've been challenged because my thought process has been off a little bit. So I've been binge eating Frenchies and everything else because of 
you know, that, that, that energy. And uh, it's funny that you say that. Uh, man, it, I, I'm, I'm loving this whole conversation. Sure appreciate you, man. Sure appreciate you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Let me tell you, let's, do, let's go back to me and this Reese P. Y'all know I love Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Crack. Crack. But every time, it, one Reese's Peanut Butter Cup did not change my body. Neither did 100. It didn't. All y'all keep thinking big decisions run your life and you get all nervous when you gotta go, I gotta select the college. That's not the big decision. All the little decisions that got you up to selecting college, that's what's determining you selected the college. <laughs> Those little decisions gave you options and or gave you no options. But at the end of the day, it's all what you wanted. That's hard to accept, boy. Any of you that have been using religion to escape from your responsibility of your own life, any of you that have that you've never been single because you keep jumping to relationship to relationship to blame others for your life, or so you never have to deal with your life, so you serve them so much that you never serve you. I'm talking today. I'm going to get all in some driveway. Some of y'all, the only reason that you've never been single is not because you don't love yourself because you don't want to deal with yourself. So you get totally lost in who you dating. Baby, you need something? You ain't got no license. Let me fix that for you. We're going we gonna to take care. You know, I just like to serve. Nope. You don't want to deal with you. That's why when you get home and you're by yourself, you cut on the lights, you cut on the TV, and you listen to music at the same time. Because silence forces you to talk to yourself. You know you love yourself when you can sit in silence and talk to yourself. Now, someone right now, it's always a naysayer. Every time you say something, it's always the antithesis, right? It's always a naysayer. So, well, I love sitting by myself. Yeah, you listen, you read the book while listening to music. You don't love to sit by yourself. You don't. You got everything in the world that you want. Can I push you further? Every heart attack, you wanted it. You don't like that. Don't like that. Can I push you further? Every disease, you wanted it. And when you die, this is, this is way level of advanced. This is way up their level. Somebody will hate me for this. You will pick the most harmonious way in your level of awareness to leave this earth, no matter how painful it is. If you don't know nothing about drugs, you ain't going to die about the drugs. If you don't know nothing about no gang violence, you're not going to die about no gang violence. But if they told you all your life that congestive heart failure runs in your family, you will create the fastest, quickest, most harmonious way to your own congestive heart failure until, do you mind if I borrow from Dr. Joe Dispenza? You change the habit of being yourself. Until then, you will create the life that's worthy of you. Fair enough. All right, can y'all see me? Pamela, can you see me moving my head side to side? All right, good. I was frozen for a second, according to the chat. Is thou hearest me? All right, pause real quick. Let's get these. <clears throat> let, all right, you ain't getting diabetes or high blood pressure. But that's what that's all in your circle, lane. Okay. Okay. Let's pause. <laughs> Jerome, let me get some of these stones. Y'all throw these stones at me. Somebody vehemently. That's way no, more uh -uh. than ain't. There you go. Have, Give me them stones. I, I have no stones for you on this one, Antonio. I, I'm telling you, I believe you're right. I believe you're right on the money. I have no I have no stones for you. Okay, because I got the weight 
That's on me because I put it there, okay? And when I make up my mind that I don't want it to be there, I'll do something about that. It ain't got nothing to do with what you said. I ain't mad with you. You spoke the truth to me. Now the question is, what am I going to do with that truth? And I ain't got nothing to do with you. That's my truth. Hello? <laughs> All right. I'm glad you said that. You said two things that are worth repeating. I chose to have his body. Some of you are passively using I chose this as a way to continue to punish yourself. You do it all the time. I, I'll, I'll explain to you in a second. Then he snuck in and said, he snuck in and said, and when I decide to change, proving he ain't decided to change, right? Okay. He snuck that in, didn't he? He snuck that in. And when I decide, it, all, it sounds good in hip hop. You're right. You, you got the hip hop together. So let's break down these two things real quick. We'll break down these two things, and I'm going to also answer how do you change it. Some of you, this doesn't apply to everybody, but it applies to It applies to anyone addicted to depression. Let me back up. Remember, I, was it this class I showed y'all about neuropeptides? Pe and I mean, I teach like nine times a week, so I don't even know. With the wedding and the wedding. Okay, all right, good. When I showed y'all that, they were breaking down to you how everyone's addicted to something and you're typically addicted, addicted to the hormone you continuously release. It's in the book? Okay. You're continuously addicted to it. So if you have anger problems, you're addicted to all those hormones that are, that are associated with anger. Adrenaline, endorphins, all that stuff, right? You're addicted to it. To those of you addicted to being depressed, I would never do myself like that. Yes, you would. You always have to have an argument. How many of you apologize and you ain't did nothing wrong? You better raise your hand over here. You are addicted to depression. If you apologize, yes, that is most certainly an addiction. The person who just inboxed me, that is most certainly an addiction because it's the only time you feel power. Doesn't matter what the question was. Doesn't matter what the question was. Well, it was a super personal question, but I'm answering it. Well, give me a favor. I'm running this energy because someone else in the same energy of this question, you feel I'm talking to you. The question was super personal. And yes, that's an addiction. Because it's the only time you feel powerful and feel confident in what you can do instead of who you are. That works for any state. That works for any state. Person. Works for any state. Oh. So, uh, go ahead. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. When, so let's say if I was addicted to depression, I feel powerful when I'm depressed? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you feel powerful when you're depressed. Would you like to give you a visual example? Okay. PJ say PJ say Antonio, got you. Give me a visual example. I got you, PJ. I got you. She didn't say that, but I'm just anticipating someone wants me to be visual. I used to have this friend who used to date this friend. And one of the most, one of the first signs of abusive relationship is what you call high involvement. It is where you leave your family and you cling to theirs. And every time this friend would go to school or go to work or anything of that nature, okay? Every time, every time, every single time, this friend would fake a headache. As a provider and protector, he would then call in or cancel the studio time, whatever he's trying to do, and take care of her. And she would fake the headache until she actually had one. And I had to counsel them. And I picked up on it immediately. And she would, I, mean, I saw an expression, I said, you know, you love that, right? She hated that. This, I'm just talking to her, like, this isn't, this is individual at this time. 
she hated that I said that. And when I had to point out to her, which any great teacher or book will point out to you, she loved the attention. She hated him building a life in which she perceived he would not need her. So the reward for her was to always be sick so she, so he would need her. This is, and I, I explained it. This is the honest, I, this is, this is the honest to God truth. I'm, I'm telling you this as a real story. Uh, I hope I would that you allow this information because I am about to say a shocker. And they both hated me for it. But they paid me. So they had to keep coming back. <laughs> and I made them pay me in full. They paid me for it, and they hated me. They hated me, Pam, for saying this, because I said it privately, then I said it privately to the other, then I said it openly to both, and they hated it. And for four months, they hated me, hated it. Every time I brought it up, hated it, and just hated it and couldn't wait for the six months to be over. And she was pregnant. She's a little five foot one girl. I'm being mean. She would cry in the session and I'll be hurting the baby because she was pregnant. Okay. Month two, she was pregnant. They went to the doctor to find out the gender. This child was never pregnant. She gained. 50 pounds, because the mind doesn't care. <laughs> the mind doesn't care. She literally manifested a pregnancy so this man would not go to his job. He lost his job. So when you ask me, do I get rewarded for being depressed? Yes. Yes, you do. Your reward system's just backwards. But it is a reward for you. The attention, the, you, you ever seen a little boy get a Band-Aid? What does that little boy do? I, I got a Band-Aid, right? Got a Band-Aid. Or and they, they, they scratch themselves lightly. I got a Bobo. Can be pillin'. Can I? I got a bobo with a band aid because they desire and crave that attention. Not that mommy's not giving it to them. They just desire that attention, right? Boom. Your reward system's jacked up. Your subconscious can literally give you a pregnancy. It gives men sympathy pain. That's even more. In I don't have a uterus. I don't. Yeah. I barely got estrogen. I mean, I got just enough to be human. I ain't that empathetic. God, God gave me just enough. All right, yeah, that makes you human. But I can have sympathy pain if my subconscious allows me to do so. So watch this here. I got to let me see this question in my <coughs> people with diseases. That's what someone just asked me. How does it work with people with diseases? Yeah, I'm not going to like this at all. And I'm going to take. Yeah, I'm not going to like this at all, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best. Use my speaker training. Change my tone. Direct my pace. Change my volume to connect with my crowd. Okay. All diseases are caused by stress. Every last one. This ease is what Grace said. That's number one. Grace said that's number one. <laughs> number two, disease can't live in a happy body, an alkaline body, which is why people are crazy about alkaline water. Only more alkaline water. It's the only water for me. 
You know, they just started doing that like 10 years ago, right? 20 years. You know, by the water went in the 60s, right? You understand? I counseled a woman in her initial coaching session. I rejected her. I do. When I coach, I, it's initial coaching session. This is where I'm seeing if I want to coach you. Period, point blank. And in the contract, it says at either time. Either one of us can cancel this because I don't want to be dealing with nobody. This lady had no toe, no big toe, blah, 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 blah. How many of you, how many of you have ever heard someone brag about their illnesses? Mm -hmm. It's real subtle. Mm -hmm. Real subtle. Hey, how's it going? Ooh, cha. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. It shows it's a good day. Yeah, we, it is, but I just can't enjoy it. The, come, come on, y'all know these people. Don't, 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 don't do this. Don't, 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 don't get none. I, I know I can't hear you because you're muted, but as Daryl said in the Bureau of Diving and Speakers yesterday, that I can see your body actions and I can see if you vibing with me. 90% of communication is nonverbal. You know these people. You know these people. They're always sick and they're always talking about how bad it is. These people enjoy being sick. So this is this is the hardest. This is that's why I said I'm just four weeks on this. This is hard to accept because you can't accept that the things in your life that you don't like, you plan it. This is why most people are not successful. This is why most people are not successful because the stuff in your life that you don't like, you plan it. I didn't give that to you. I didn't do you like that. You know how many made me eat those reaches? It didn't. I ate them damn things. They was good. I ate them. Too many of them. Sometimes I ate them as meal replacements. I deserve to have a stomach. <laughs> Replace the whole meal with four king size Reese's peanut butter cup packages. Sixteen doggone cups. Replace the meal. I deserve to have a stomach, God dog. I was planting them seeds, wasn't I? Now all of a sudden I'm mad I gotta work out. That don't make no sense. Mad, I'm mad that Let's see, last night, you know what I ate last night? I'm, I'm, I'm watching my calories. I'm, I'm doing it right. I've, I've got a whole, I actually, I paid $30 for a meal plan. Not, not the, yeah. you know, the stuff, but I went, yeah. paid, I'm doing intermittent fasting, okay? Yeah, I'm doing intermittent fasting. I paid 30 for, it was very detailed. My body weight, my ambitions, my goal, my age, like very detailed from a nutritionist. I paid $30. So I'm on this Monday through Sunday plan and I'm followed. That's why. That's why your boy getting sexy. I, I don't know if y'all can see that. But that's why your boy getting sexy, right? But don't, don't worry about that, though. Don't worry about that. But I, I got it to my body weight. I, I know I'm, I'm – my, 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 it's so detailed. I know my metabolism is operating at 38%, which is below, below average. Like, I know the percentage in which my metabolism is operating. Now, what it look like, Daryl, that I'm mad that I can only eat a meal from 10 to 2, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. yesterday. And it had to be one healthy, moderate-sized meal. What does it look like me complaining? First off, if I complain, Jerome, no matter how much I'm doing it, I ain't going to get the result. Because losing weight can't live in an unhappy, unhappy body. All I'm gonna do is retain the dog on weight, and I'm gonna say this ain't working. They wasted my money. No, it's working. Your vibration ain't working. Your pH balance ain't working. Your muscles can't burn. Your body can't burn that fat and turn into muscles. Well, actually, it's the other way around. You making muscles have to burn fat first. You can't do that. Unhappy. You can't. And some of y'all out here right now complaining about my situation. 
You in my situation. Now, I'm 37. Truth be told, at 27, I was a fine specimen. Ooh, wee. I was a fine specimen. I had an eight pack. I ain't lying. And I knew I was fine, too. I'd roll up in the car. I opened up my door. I was 27. I was making $100,000 a year. Let me, let me talk to my fellas. Dave, I rolled up and opened up my door. I wouldn't even talk. You knew what time it was. You knew what time it was. Girl, come on in here. You know what time it is. This is the truth. This is the truth. This is the truth. And check this out. This is how it went. I was sexy. And for the next 10 years, I said, I'm tired of working out. I'm going to just stay this size. And I ate Reese's Pizza. <laughs> wow. It took me 10 years to get this body. I'm complaining because I want it off in 10 minutes. I want to wake up skinny. Well, yeah, if I do invent that product. If I, if I invent the wake up skinny product, it's going down. Yeah, if I invent the wake up... You understand. <laughs> Daryl, we going to the bank. If I can teach people how to wake up skinny, we going to the bank. He going to do the meal plan. It's going down. We going to the bank. Look, you don't get to complain about the life you planted. And the only way you planted it, because your subconscious said, yeah, that's what I want. And that's tough, ain't it? But only the people who can take that tough truth become successful. Some of your businesses ain't working, not because, not because you're not doing anything wrong. You're doing everything right. But the universe is waiting on you to take care of your body. So you can then reap the harvest of your business. Oh, I just made sense, didn't I, Grace? Can I put that in a religious thing? God knows not to give you that million dollar lottery because you're going to spend it on booze, <laughs> weed, and whatever else habits you got. You, some of you don't deserve what you're praying for because you don't qualify what you're praying for. Ooh. You don't qualify for what you're praying for. You don't vibrate at the frequency of what you're praying for, so you don't get it. Some of you are doing all the right stuff with your business right now, but subconsciously, you don't love yourself, so money can't love you. And all the healthy customers that look like Daryl who would shop with you, pass you up because you don't look like the leader they're looking for. It's, it, 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 what was that preacher saying? It's, 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 it's tight, but it's right. <laughs> Look. Hey, I'm just the messenger. I'm work. I am absolutely working. Well, you know, you know what was bad, Daryl. You know what's even. You know what was bad about me. Let me tell you what was bad about me. Let me tell you what was bad about me and being overweight. I mean, no dog on sense. For one, I know better. That's number one. Let me tell you how much of a decision this was for me. I know better. Two, I eat healthy. I have, I have a very healthy diet. Just be consuming them Reese's peanut butter cups like crazy. And I did it over a course of 10 years. I did. It was my cigarette. Some of y'all smoke. I took down chocolate and peanut butter and a bunch of sugar. <laughs> Some of y'all drink. I took down Reese's. Took them down. I knew better, and I had a correct diet, and I still let my stomach get, get overweight. Antonio. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. You muted yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I know my, I know my background is probably loud, so I'm trying to turn. That's you. all right. Ain't nobody worry about it. Ain't nobody worry about it. Go ahead. You can ask your question. Okay. So no, it's, it's not a question. It just brought me to reality of how all of my 20 years has gotten me to where my body weight looks the way it looks. 
is because um, I always complained that I was too skinny. And when I saw a guy that I really like, and he's like, oh, I only mess with thick girls, then guess what? I tried to do everything I could to fit his needs. And then when there was another guy I liked it, then it was like, oh, okay, now I'm gonna switch my body to like this. And none of that served me because I was serving them instead of myself. So the way that I look now with this belly, which I never had, is because of the thoughts that I created way back when. <laughs> now I'm trying to recreate create the body I want. Y'all see that brilliant she said? And Salisha, you skinny. How you gonna be skinny with a stomach? Come on now. You just as wrong as me. Whatever. You just as wrong as me. You you just as wrong as me. Gonna be skinny with a stomach. You got all this other stuff right. But that that is you understand what I'm saying? But it is the truth. And here's the deal. Here's what I need all of you to receive, except allow you wanted it. The truth is, I wanted to create a life in which I was overweight. See, some of you can't home in on that. Because I would never hurt myself like that. Yes, the hell you would, you're here. You're here, you are here. You are here, stop. Stop looking at harvest and then talking about your intentions of it. I ain't even trying to step on your toes. I'm just saying. Harvest is here. But I didn't try to do that, but you did it. I dare you. I dare you be like Chantel and not skip the gym tomorrow. She posted about something like that today or yesterday. I can't remember which one. Seriously. I, let me tell you something I'm doing right now, and, and Daryl's gonna laugh at this. I've been doing a hundred push-ups a day. Didn't I tell you I was trying to get to? How many would I know myself and get to? I'm doing a hundred. I, I was gonna get to a thousand a day. I'm doing a hundred push-ups a day. I'm, I'm gonna work my way to a thousand. And they, you know, real push-ups because push-ups is a full body workout. Them joints hurt. I be leaving push-ups with my thighs hurting, my everything just be hurting. So I can't even do it with shoes. I gotta put my shoes on just to do the push-ups now because I'm going too hard. It'll be hurting my toes, right? I got to just put the shoes on. But here's the problem, Daryl. Took me five weeks to start these doggone push-ups. Every day I looked at that dog on ground and made an excuse why not to bend down and get to it. Every day. Every day I looked down there and said, man, I got on my, I got on my dress shoes. These are my good shoes. I don't want to put my, I don't put no toe lines in my shoes. Come on, I'm, this is my transparency. I'm keeping it very real. If you said something similar, same on both of them. Man, them, them, them shoes, them shoes is $100. I'm not going to mess up them shoes. Yeah, I'm not even no crease in them shoes. Come on, man, I'm tripping. You know what else I said? I got on the right shoes. I got on church socks. I don't know. I did. I'm just, yeah, I'll be making up some crazy excuses. Because because when you as aware as me, you gotta say some really, really ignorant stuff to buy into it. Then one day it was, you know what, I need I need to cut my toenails, they 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 too long. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't too long. That's yeah, real talk. They would they would they they look just fine. They wouldn't real they wouldn't long, they wouldn't even there. It was exactly the way your toenails did. It was mine. They, 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 they were regular toenails, but I still had an excuse for it. The other day, I was like, all right, but I don't want to sweat in this shirt. I am not lying. That's an expensive shirt. Did you say that too, Grace? <laughs> I don't want to sweat in this shirt. Did I wear, I don't want to sweat in this shirt so early. I got to work for the rest of the day. Then I hit this one, MOD. Well, I'm being in a car with a bunch of people. I don't want to be in a car sweating. Smelling like I've been working out. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Y'all. Over and over and over, I was making up excuses to maintain the body I wanted, which was the one that does not serve me. Or, or this one, Antonio. I don't want to exercise because I got to go take a shower right after. 
See? <laughs> Boy, I said that one plenty of times. Hey, and you ain't doing no push-ups. <laughs> Go ahead. Let, let me jump in there. Uh, if you guys have yeah. not started reading Joe Dispenza's book, he writes about the chemicals that's being released. Now, when I was going through School for Nutrition, we talked about the uh, peptides, the various different things, and the p- p- pineal glands, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the challenge is that once we start releasing all these chemicals that makes us want to do what we do, and then we try to go against that, then we get a message to our brain. See, this is science. This is hard science. And it just blew my mind because just like what you just said, Antonio, we all go through that stuff. I go through it every single morning, right? Why I'm not going in there and doing the exercises that I know I need to do with my arm, you know? So then your brain starts figuring out ways. See, this is not your weakness. This is your programming. So the programming starts saying, okay, all right, uh, all right, well, let's do this. Okay, the shirt doesn't fit. I'm going to sweat and all this different stuff you come up with. But that's just the brain trying to get you back to where it wants you to be because this is where you're comfortable. This is why he says you do it voluntarily. You want to do it. You love it. It's crazy. Love it. Yeah, he says something like, you know, but it's the, the it brain tricks you. It, it, it goes. Yeah. Well, this is don't 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 don't, don't tell them we gonna send a signal. Yeah. This, this sneaky is send yeah. a signal. Yeah, <laughs> he said, I read that part this morning. <laughs> yeah, I read that part this morning. So yeah. did he said, yeah, we we all but but Daryl hit the nail on the head. But we won't we won't we got what we want. All of you, everyone, listen to me. Good or bad, you have exactly what you want. Can you handle that? Cannot handle that. Ooh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some, some, some messages tonight. I know it's wrong. Antonio. So now I don't know if you're getting ready to go into it now, but I sure would like to see how do we address that because I think it's obvious <laughs> if we don't accept it or believe it or not, it is what it is. But that's the big problem. What's, what's our solution? That is good. Let's talk it out as a team. What's our solution? Remember, I think the first, I would say episode, first week, I went to, remember that one, two, three I was talking about, the story you tell yourself and others, and then your limiting beliefs and your fear, consequences, and judgments. And that's all in that answer. It's there. Go back there and listen to that. But, but if not, let's have an open dialogue. Jerome, let's start off with you first. Now, I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to ask you a question, but your answer is wrong already. No matter what you say, it's wrong. Okay? Yeah, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. I know it's wrong. Here's the right answer. The part of the brain that knows what to do and does what to do are two different parts of the brain. So repeat that again. Repeat it again. The The part of the brain that knows what to do and does what to do, those are two different parts of the brain. <clears throat> That's the right answer to the question I'm getting ready to ask you. Okay. Basically, knowing something and doing something, those two different battles. I agree. Okay. And the part of your brain that knows what to do, we know everything, don't we? <laughs> we know about cars and all that stuff and all that stuff. <laughs> We ain't doing it though. <laughs> you understand? All right. So that's the answer. Now, now I'm going to ask you a question. This time you won't have the wrong answer. Okay. What can you do to do better about physical exercise? Start. Okay. Fantastic answer. Say no more. Say no more. Thank you very much. I'm getting ready. To, I'm getting ready to play something here in a second. Start. F O D. One answer is start. I want you now to help Jerome with his physical exercise 
and Antonio with his physical exercise, what can we do besides start that will help us? And the reason I'm doing this because we always know how to help people, don't we? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when it, we give out the soundest of advice that we never <laughs> take ourselves. Okay. So so we all know so we true. are expert dietitians. So we are expert counselors. None of us have ever been mad before when we're talking to other people, right? Okay, we all get this. FOD, help me and Jerome out. You're going to have the right answer. What do we need to do besides start? I honestly don't know. <laughs> this is my buddy. <laughs> no, nah, that's fair. That's fair. I honestly don't know. No problem. Your curls is popping. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Great. What do we need to do besides start? Move. 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 Talisha, when should we move? Now. All right. Start, move now. Literally, literally. He do an overhead class right now. <laughs> Cam two. <laughs> One, two, three, one, one, two, three, two. <laughs> That's that Billy Chan. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah. Overhead clack. Y'all yeah, 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 don't know about that. All right. But good, then. Good. Well, Joyce, yeah, I used to make my team do those. Start, move now. That's good. BJ. Besides start moving and now, what should we do? I want to, I think it's screen is frozen. All right, so we'll call on Chantel. You there? So this screen is frozen. Yeah. New York <laughs> City. Start move now. What, since you in the gym, you got your body tight, you got your six pack. You got the mm -hmm. Janet Jackson abs. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Janet Jackson abs, Angela Bassett arm. Okay, you going? You got it going on. Now, what else should we do besides start moving now? Do it again. Ooh. Whoa! You know what? Don't none of us like your answer at all. <laughs> because we get lit, lit, lit. We get it there, FOD. We we'll get there. We we'll work out one time. Then we we'll get in that. We we'll get in that mirror, and we go. I don't see nothing. I ain't going back. <laughs> I ain't going back. I don't see nothing. These weights didn't work. <laughs> that run hurt too much. Daryl says, "Start small." That's powerful. All right. Then we got. Start, move now, do it again. God dog it. You made me want to cuss. <laughs> do it again and start small. And all of these are the right answers. Yep. The question now becomes how do we do these things? Yep. Right? Is that fair? Change the mindset. Okay, change the mindset. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Family yeah. shoes. I'm sorry. In initiate the thought of action. All right. Initiate the thought of action. Just thought in the mind. But but not just a thought. My man said a thought of action. It's a whole different kind of thought, ain't it? He said thought of action. Don't don't be around here playing. Go ahead. Initiate that thought of action. Yes? Yes, please go. Okay. When, I think it was Daryl, he said start small. Is that right? Yep. Okay. It made me think of in the beginning when I had started and how I started small, I would literally um, jog just enough to get the sweat. That's all I would do in 30 minutes. So I definitely understand, get that. That makes sense. As well as compared to how many times in the past, I'm like, oh, I got to go lose this weight. I got to do this right now. This is because this is good for me and I need to do this and then mm. I just do it and now I'm satisfied and then I don't go back so it made me think of how in this like Talisha this mindset 
it was more like, okay, this is just what I want to do. Like, I just want mm. to. That's it. It's not, I got to do it so hard. So when he said, think, you know, move small, it made me think of as well as mindset and not just activity. Like, that, I want to yeah. do this right now. I just want to do this because I just do. <laughs> right. Right. You're absolutely right. You just, just do it. You, good example. That, yeah, it's absolutely. Man, it's a good example. You know, it's a punishment. Mm. You want to have fun. Antonia, mm. I was going to give an example of what she said. Women. Yeah, sure. You give an example and then LOD's next. We do this a lot when it comes to our wedding or a party we got to go to. We make sure our body's right to fit that dress. <laughs> good point. You show right. That's a good you show point. right. It's all right. I'm trying to have a summer body all year long. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Y'all know why? Y'all know why I'm losing weight? It's a very vain reason. It has nothing to do with. It has nothing to do with motivation. Nothing to do with longevity. I want to look damn good on the red carpet. That's it. No, that's real talk. I understand where my life is going and red carpets are coming and I'm going to need to look like Idris Elba, not T.D. Jakes. <laughs> he went You're wrong there. for that. He went there. I got a lot in common with T.D. Jakes right now. You know what I'm saying? A lot. Woo. Big stomach and tight clothes. Yes. So I'm just saying. Just say it. <laughs> you ain't the only one to notice. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it, man. I'm working on it. MOD, Bashangi, help us out. Um, okay, so I'm going to need a better answer than what's coming up now because I get that, yeah, you punch me in the face, punch me in the stomach. I wanted this. It's my fault. I planted it. I'm harvesting it. It's not good enough for you to tell me that. Just do it. Because again, if I, if I want, if I, if, if I could just simply do it, I would have done it, but I'm, I'm still here. So it's almost as if like, I'm thinking like, there has to be a drastic shift in something no. inside of me for me to be able to like, have that do what Chantel was saying and want something different that coming from a different sure. place or something because just do it. I'm not satisfied with that answer. No, absolutely. Wow. That's why I had all of us doing something. Now let's get us the answer that this class has been leading to. of motivation and I think motivation is complete garbage so maybe we should start there that is a perfect place to start so I totally agree with you but why you do you do? say that I do 100% now I said that in the spirit of I know what you're trying to do so it is meant with absolute um, reverence uh -huh. but why do you say that it's garbage well um, and we'll, we'll talk a lot about this but um, I think it's garbage because at some point we all bought into this lie that you've got to feel ready in order to change. Yeah. We bought into this, this complete falsehood that at some point you're going to have the courage. At some point you're going to have the confidence and it's total bullshit. Frankly, I don't, are we allowed to swear on the show? Okay. Um, it's, it's complete garbage. And so there are so many people in the world and, 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 you know, you may be watching this right now and you have these incredible ideas and what you think is missing is motivation. And that's not true. Because the way that our minds are wired and the fact about human beings is that we are not designed to do things that are uncomfortable or scary or difficult. Our brains are designed to protect us from those things because our brains are trying to keep us alive. And in order to change, in order to build a business, in order to be the best parent, the best spouse, to do all those things that you know you want to do with your life, with your work, with your dreams, you're going to have to do things that are difficult, uncertain, or scary. 
which sets up this problem for all of us. You're never going to feel like it. Motivation is garbage. You, you only feel motivated to do the things that are easy, right? What do you think that is? Oh, I know exactly why that is. Because I, I, I've studied this so much because for me, one of the hardest things to figure out was why is it so hard to do the little things that would improve my life? And what I've come to realize and what we'll talk a lot about today is that the way that our minds are designed is our minds are designed to stop you at all costs from doing anything that might hurt you. Yeah. And the way that, 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 that this all happens is it all starts with something super subtle that none of us ever catch. And that is with this habit that all of us have that nobody's talking about. We all have a habit of hesitating. Mm. We have an idea. You're sitting in a meeting. You have this incredible idea. And instead of just, you know, saying it, you stop and you hesitate. Now, what none of us realize is that when you hesitate, just that moment, that micro moment, that small hesitation, it sends a stress signal to your brain. It wakes your brain up and your brain all of a sudden goes, oh, oh wait a minute. Wait, wait, why is he hesitating? He didn't hesitate when he put on his killer spiky sneakers. He didn't hesitate with the uh, really cool track pants. He didn't hesitate with the NASA t-shirt. Now he's hesitating to talk. Something must be up. So then your brain goes to work to protect you. It has a million different ways to protect you. One of them is called the spotlight effect. It's a known phenomenon where your brain magnifies risk. Why? To pull you away from something that it perceives to be a problem. And so you can truly trace every single problem or complaint in your life to silence and hesitation. Those are decisions. And what I do and what's changed my life is waking up and realizing that motivation is garbage. I'm never going to feel like doing the things that are tough or difficult or uncertain or scary or new. So I need to stop waiting until I feel like it. And number two, I am one decision away from a totally different marriage, a totally different life, a totally different job, a totally different income, a totally different uh, relationship with my kids. Not like one decision I'm divorcing you in, in the marriage example, but one decision on you know, you could be having a conversation with your spouse and you feel your emotions rise up and within a tiny window, those emotions can take over and can impact how your marriage goes. Or you can learn how to take control of that micro moment and make a decision to act in a way that actually shifts your marriage. Your life comes down to your decisions. And if you change your decisions, you will change everything. All right, keep this in mind that because I'm coming after everybody that got something to ask, say, do, or whatever. So I want you to keep this in mind. I'll cut that off for me. I want you to keep in mind that it's more than just you on the call. I also want you to keep in mind that this more than just your personality on the call. I also want you to keep in mind when you get something, three other personalities have not got it yet. It's four major type of personalities. So what may or may not seem like an hour and 25 minutes of rant or this, or this, and that is actually someone brilliant in cognitive therapy, cognitive behavior therapy. In order for me to play this four minute video, if you're an hour and a half and you accept one idea tucked in it. And we're getting ready to talk about it. And it's completely in line with subconscious. What you need to hear, that's Mel Robbins. She wrote the book, Five Second Rule. It is based in science, like Joe Dispenza's book, of why you freaking have your life. And in that book, she describes how when you're ready to do something, your brain is going to talk you out. I'm going to show you. I have one more other thing to show you. Your brain is going to talk you out. So what you need to do is like a NASA lunch. That's why he was wearing a NASA shirt, because he read the book. And the NASA lunch, she realized they counted down. Five, four, three, two, 
one. And one day she realized if she would just lunch up like a NASA rocket, she would do the stuff that she didn't want to do. Mm-hmm. Here's the one of the main point. Well, the main point of the book, but you need to read the book so you go deeper to reinforce it. F O D. Your brain is going to talk you out of everything that you want because everything you want is uncomfortable. And if you don't do that shit in five seconds, you will not get it done. Whether you agree, Chantel, with me or not, you got five seconds before your brain uses the spotlight effect and take you out of it. Five seconds before you go to the gym. Five seconds before I get down and do some push-ups. If you make a decision, and if you don't act on that decision in five seconds, your brain is going to keep you comfortable. But you know what the main point of that message was that we about to talk about? Wasn't that motivation is garbage. That was her attention grabber. The main point of that message was hidden within three minutes. Every last one of us is one decision away from a better marriage, a better life. The truth is, y'all ain't made no decision. And you want to blame me. You want to blame your teacher. You want to blame others. Nah, I'm not the problem. Your mom's not the problem. Your dad's not the problem. Your kid's not the problem. Your uncle's not the problem. You and your lack of decision-making that's for your good is your problem. And that comes from your subconscious. Do you like it? Nope. Do I like having to spend 90 minutes just to get you to accept four minutes? Nope. Do I do it because ain't nobody else going to do it? Yep. Because ain't nobody else out here doing this. I'm one of the only people that I know that get in your filth and walk you out of it. That is exactly what I do. Every doggone day. I jump in your filth. Let you talk back and walk you out of it. So here's what you're going to accept. You're one decision away from a better life. Just one. Why do you think we've been talking about decisions for 90 minutes? Why do you think I spent 90 minutes talking about me? Why you thought I was doing whatever it is in your subconscious mindset. Whatever you thought I was doing subconsciously, if you thought I was doing a great job, it's because you told yourself the story of yourself and the other. If you thought I was picking on you, that's what you always say about everybody. You thought I was talking in circles. You say it about everything because you damn impatient. And I care. That's why I'm here. Everybody's one decision away, Pam Norris. And now you're in my world. When I coach, which is rare now that I do one-on-one coaching, I let everybody know your world don't exist to me no more. When you and me, you jumping up to my vibration, period, point blank. I don't have time for your world. It's going to collide with mine. And since I have allowed you into my life, I'm not going where you are. You're going where I'm at. The first thing I say in every coaching session, I mean it. Now, all of y'all in my coaching session. Forget your world. You don't like it? Hang up. You're one decision away. That is a fact. You no longer get to deny this. You get to struggle with it. You get to hate me for saying it. But you don't get to deny that you're one decision away from a better life. Now, who's brave enough to start a dialogue with me about why you ain't made that damn decision yet? Let's go, Grace. Okay, I didn't think I did. <laughs> Can I do? Tell you why I'm one decision away? Why you ain't made it yet? Why I ain't made it yet? Because I'm scared and I don't like looking stupid. You know this, <laughs> but I, uh, I don't like looking stupid and I need to make a decision to stop thinking about 
not looking stupid and just go for it and get it done. Well, what you tell me, get that shit done. That's exactly what I say. All right, you use your mic. Because I'm coming for your skin real quick. I want your skin rubbed off. I'm coming to you next day. I want your skin rubbed off. I want you, and I got you after Dave, Chantel. I want your skin, Grace. Why are you so scared to look stupid? Oh, my skin looks stupid. Embarrassment, I feel like it's going to kill me. And it don't. But I just, I can't, I can't stand not, I can't stand not looking perfect. I guess, I guess that's what it is. I ain't done with you. Mm-hmm. You ain't gave me no skin yet. Okay. We're going deeper. Okay. Who made you responsible for being perfect? And, and don't, don't tell me I did. My parents. Oh, come on. Uh, well, I guess I remember one time I was, I would speak proper. And then I was in another part of the house, but I heard my dad making fun of me. And I was like, okay, well, to him, I look stupid. So we ain't gonna talk proper no more. We could have talked like this for the rest of the time. That was one, that's, one, that's one thing I can remember. Thank you very much. You gave me some good skin. I want some more. Now, your dad did that. He wrong. He, need, he owed me push-ups. He loves you greatly. Mm-hmm. But he did it. Mm-hmm. You made a meaning out of it, didn't you? Yeah. By making a meaning, you said, what does this mean? What, excuse me, Matt, rephrase that question. What do you, what meaning did you make out of your dad making fun of you for talking well? Uh, <clears throat> this is, this is not how we talk. No, nah, I want the real one. That's not real. No, I never thought about just talking white. No, that was that never ended my kid. No, I didn't say you thought that. <laughs> let me let me let me frame this for you. You just said you have a fear of looking stupid. You didn't make a meaning that talking well was stupid. You made a meaning when you talk well, you're stupid, or you look stupid. Yeah. There's a difference between what I'm asking and what you're giving me. Why did you equate this makes me look stupid and I quote you and it makes me feel like I want to die? You said that earlier. Because it came from the one person that loved me the most. (laughs) No, one of the people that love you the most. Oh, do you, are you afraid of looking stupid? Let me ask you a question. <clears throat> you fall in front of 10,000 people. You're going to be afraid of looking stupid then. But are you going to be afraid of looking stupid at the 10,000 or the fact that one in the crowd may actually know you? Which one is it? One in the crowd may actually know, know me. So is it fair to say well, actually, I mean, I'll leave you. I'm sorry. That's not. So, why does looking stupid make you want to die? Real answer. You yeah, gave me a pretty good one. Oh, thank you. Um. I I fear what people who know me will say. All right. Thank you very much. Everybody clap for Grace. Come on. There you go. I'm going to need that skin, son. I'm going to need that skin. Good. I'm coming from all y'all. got your hands up. I am. You're not leaving my conversation. All right, then. So we'll put Pam in the equation as well. We'll end the class with Pam. We'll end the class with Pam. Dave, you are next. Unmute your mic. Yes, sir. What were you going to What were you going to say, my man? I guess I guess mine is fear. 
of not of not doing it right or or the opinion of other people really weighs heavy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so that even even to the fact like I was I was doing videos consistently, you know, just about my journey, and then I had one or two individuals tell me something about why am I talking about that because I'm not doing what I'm talking about. And it affected my journey because in the process of me talking about my journey, I was bettering myself. And mm. I, I, I do have a fear of, to be honest with you, of success. I don't know why, but it's like I camouflage it with not putting 100 percent into a lot of a lot of stuff all right so let me i want some scan i want some scan okay now you said two things there and, and both you and grace suffer for what napoleon hill calls the fear of criticism it's one of the six major fears that are holding you back fear of criticism but we'll we'll get to that when it's time to get to that. What, who made you responsible for holding the weight of what other people think about you? I'm interested to know that. And you can't say, well, I did it because you didn't do it. This is the one time you get to blame somebody else. I'm gonna say my father. That's that's, okay. that's been that's, that's been my biggest challenge all my life. I just feel like I've been looking for approval from him. Mm -hmm. Now let me pause real quick. Keep keep, keep your mic un mic unmuted. I want to address you and Grace at the same time. You have the same issue. I don't know you have an issue. I have I I didn't diagnose you. I didn't tell you what to do. All right. I'm getting ready to though. Same thing with you. But let me explain something. All of you are accustomed to me saying it's all your fault, Evod, all your fault, Tony, all your fault, Cynthia. And it's true, it is your fault. But before it was your fault, something happened, and you are currently still blaming that something. And then you made a meaning out of it. So let me jump to the fast, let me jump. It's in the book? Okay. So let me jump to the finish line and then take you back to the middle. Both Grace and Debbie, you need to forgive your father. You have yet to do it. No matter how much you say, yes, I have. Nope. You either don't understand forgiveness or you forgave him for the big stuff. Not for that one thing that you still keep competing against today. All right, take you back to the middle. That's the punchline. You see how I gave you the answer, Dave? Yeah. I gave Jerome the same. If I said, Jerome, your answer will be wrong automatically. I, get, I, gave, I gave him the answer, too. And then I brought him back to the middle. I do you the same way. So now you know what the issue is. I got to get you to connect the dots. If you don't connect the dots, what I just said will be brushed by the wayside. You ever took notes Yay. on classes, never to read them notes again. It's like you never took that class before. All right. All right, Dave. That's all right. That's all right. I ain't worried about your background. Dave, I want to ask you the same question, but deeper. Okay. And here's my question to you. I first asked you, who made you responsible? You identify. My second question to you is, why do you feel that that was your responsibility to carry being perfect for your father? Um, honestly, I don't have an answer. Fair I, enough. I, I, I don't. Mm. 
No, ain't nothing wrong with that. If you had the answer, you wouldn't be suffering from it. <laughs> That's okay. Let's go deeper and let's go find the answer. Why did you shoulder perfection while relieving him of such a burden? Oh, man. Um, yeah, I'm getting what I do, bro. Well, all right, you hold that. Okay, go ahead. Let me go ahead. Let me hit. Let me hit. Let me hit. The um, what I can really conclude is, I feel like. I was, for me, when when I when I really go back and start to analyze that that situation or that, that part of my life, and it's, I, I always okay. That's like, what stop 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 stop. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. You gonna call me right after this phone call? Yes. Yes. All right. I'm gonna call him. You, you hold yours. Everybody clap for him. You got a, you, you have a problem. You about to have a breakthrough, but you also have a problem that don't need to be said on this line. So I got you. I'm gonna talk right after this for about five minutes. And now remember what, stay in that vibration, yes? Yes, yes, yes. Gonna, you're gonna finish that sentence and then I'm going to help you on your healing journey. Okay. Good. If, if your, I presume daughter was in front of you, I'd show that you go, I really would. I really would let you go. I would take that skin from you. I would. I ain't worried about these grown folk, but I am worried about the man in front of this baby girl. All right, let's see. It was Chantel was next. Uh oh, was it? <laughs> hey guys. Thompson. So we were talking about decisions and making decisions. And it made me think of how truthfully every moment, and I know we've had a call like this, this topic right here before, every moment is literally a decision. So we could talk about how you want to be around the right, you have to be around the right people. You want to be talking to yourself positively. Uh, you want to, you know, be getting in touch with nature and all these things that lead up to making better decisions, making decisions that you want to. But the point is that it is a lot. It is every moment of your life. It is what you do when you wake up in the morning. You know, it is taking each moment by each moment. So like, I think, I don't I, I know I want to say this because, um, the, you know, how it started was making a choice, making a decision when it comes to retraining your subconscious and I think you even touched on you know like limited beliefs so I was just thinking like even like as I as we all go through that stuff it's like okay what am I about to do right here right next like literally right next like what's happening next we could think of the bigger picture but what am I about to do right now in this moment because this is all I have that's good stuff that's good stuff and and your right now -ness affirms that you're all one decision away. One. One. One decision away. Yes? For a better life. You ain't got to like it, but it's still a fact. All right, before I get to Pam Norris, I want to call on the lover. Hit star six for me. I missed your message. I was like 50 minutes late. Let me see if you got something to say on this one. I think, oh, you had it. Do it again. You, you had, there you go. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so my comment went back to uh, you were asking what could we do to lose weight and my response was going to be link up with someone who's already where you want to be. Because when we're weak, 
we can find others that are stronger that can help us. And then when we're strong, we can go back and get someone else that's weak. That's all facts. That, that's all. And you know what? That actually, is, I actually didn't miss your comment. Uh, your comment was supposed to go right here. And that's a good thing. Here is what all of you need to understand, and it's based on her comment. Why y'all trying to get over this stuff by yourself? Come on. You didn't learn how to walk by yourself, talk by yourself. You weren't born by yourself. Your mama had to push you. Doctors in this modern world had to clear your throat. Why is it when we have problems, we retreat to ourselves and try to get over it ourselves? How many of you do that right now? Come on. Well, I'm going to just stay to myself until I figure it out. Don't lie. Come on now. But Einstein says you cannot create, fix a problem with the same consciousness that created it. So everyone help me. I mean, excuse me, everyone listen to me. Stop retreating to yourself. You're never gonna fix your own problems. If you were designed to fix your own problems, you'd be the only person on planet Earth. Read a book, get some friends, get the mastermind group, get coached by Field and Susan Sorrentino, get a, Get a Reese's peanut butter, a vegan Reese's peanut butter almond recipe from Daryl Dillahunty. He's going to charge you for it, though. Do something, but do better. Amen. Okay, I'm going to end with Pam Norris, but not yet. I have this iPhone here. iPhone person. Is that Lisa Gary or is that? The one from Louisiana. iPhone. It's on my second right. Oh. Oh. That might be. No, that's not MOD. I think this is from Laurel from Louisiana. It looks like Laurel, but I I can't see. Laurel, is that you? Who's I, who's who? Who is this? I, I don't want to. Let me see. I don't want to unmute the mic. Why are you doing something? I don't know. Whoever this is right here, you had your hand up, but nevertheless, that's all right. I don't know who that is. All right, Pam Norris. You know what? Wait a minute. Wait, Pam. I just had a check in my spirit. Hold on. Denise Hill. That was pretty strong, too. I put yeah, that was pretty strong. I don't know if you, <laughs> did you put a question in the chat? Oh, I did. Oh, you so did. I see it. Ooh, it was strong. It hit me hard too. Go ahead. Let me hear. So the um I, I fully receive your one uh decisional way um from all that wonderful stuff. But likewise, I do understand that you that that can go another direction too, where you're one decision away from com- being completely off course. And so sure. I'm not challenged by the fear of making a decision. I'm frustrated by what seems like the decisions are just not manifesting the way I intend them to. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, how, how do you deal with that? Yeah, it's something I had to learn through. I had to learn it the hard way, and I had to learn it. I had to get called out for this. I had to, well, let, let me explain. I used to get really, really, really frustrated with my wife at the time for not leading the way I wanted her to lead. Please take the venom and the arrogance of what I'm saying to heart because it was venom and it was arrogant. I had all these leaders around me and I made her a leader. What she was, she got great leadership capabilities. But she wouldn't lead the way I wanted her to lead. And I start getting frustrated because, man, all this teaching, 
and they tell me that I can't be doing this if I don't have my own house to get all that stuff, right? You know, all that stuff. And it and it hit me, Denise, but it wasn't me that hit me. It was the wife. She said, you give your leaders more grace than you give me. Ooh. Punch me in my ribs. I hated it. But I thought about it all night long. I mean, it, was a, it was a defining moment for me. Because I realized I was a better leader than I was a husband. Mm-hmm. I'm helping somebody today. And I went, how in the hell did that happen? That's insane. All night I thought about it. And then I realized, you know what I was trying to do, Denise? I was trying to determine and dictate when the seed I planted in her grows in my life so I can enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Now, take that out of the wife, put it into you. Denise, what you need to do, as all of us, is when you plant a seed, respect that the ground is greater than you and knows what it's doing. It's one of the hardest lessons, but it's not your job to determine and dictate when the ground yields the benefit of your decision so you can enjoy it. Deanna wants me to repeat it. Deanna wants me to repeat. Come on, I can't tell. Oh, there it is. What I said was I wanted to dictate and determine I'm going to repeat both. I'm going to dictate and determine when the seed I planted in my wife will grow in my life so I can enjoy it. What I'm saying now outside the wife is what Denise and all of us need to do is when we put a seed into the ground, we need to respect that the ground knows what it's doing and it's greater than us. And we should not treat the ground like I treated my wife at the time. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Did that help you, Denise? Sucks to hear, but... There it is. Yes. <laughs> was pushed, I was trying to find yeah. my mute button. Yeah, kind of <laughs> okay. yeah. that, that was good stuff. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad I've used my transparency. I was literally a terrible, terrible, terrible husband, but a great leader. And why? Because I was mean? Nope. I didn't think it was mean, but it was mean as hell. Because I wanted to say, FOD change, you're going to change now and right now so I can enjoy it. Listen to those words. You need to produce the harvest I put in you in my life. First off, first off, it's your life. That's number one. But then so I can enjoy it. Secondly, why you can't enjoy me? without that fruit. You picked me without it. And all of a sudden, we can't coexist until I bloom the way you determine. <laughs> Be out of there, close the hole. <laughs> it's not fair. It's not. It's not fair that I'm going to say, I'm going to say, you know what? You know what, Chantel? I know how I picked you, but I evolved, right? So I'm going to need you 
<laughs> I'm gonna need you to to grow some roots that I now need. Last thing I say about that, then I'm gonna give Pam Norris to end the class. <clears throat> Last thing I'll say. Check me out. I was mad at this same woman one day. I was mad, but not in front of her. I'm talking to a friend of mine. She owed it. And she had made some observation. I say something. And I never said nothing. I went three, four years, never said nothing. And one time I said something. This mofo go change my life with this stupid thing she said to me that made sense that I just didn't want to accept. She said, Tony, you didn't pick your wife for that. You picked her to be safe and to be faithful. You told me that yourself. You know, bottle the time in your life. You wanted a safe option. And now that you then start blowing up, you want to support you and build with you? You don't have the right to be mad at a woman for not being which you did not pick her for. <laughs> Wish I had some. I preached in this place. Yeah. I'm way too young to talk like that. <laughs> I'm way too young to talk like that. <laughs> did I hear what that lady told me? How dare you be mad at her for her not being what you didn't pick her for? And that's how some of you are doing your life. You're trying to force the ground and give you what you want right now. And mad when they don't do it. And that's when you push it away. Pam? Okay, so the um, one decision away. Um, I've been working on this for the last month because of you, Antonio. A month ago, you talked about meditation and I emailed you and told you I'd never meditated a day in my life, didn't know how to. So I went and got myself a teacher. And it's in meditating that I real, have learned this, what's in that way of my making that one decision. And for me, it's all around safety. And, it, and it's because I was raped and I was the victim of an attempted kidnapping. And because of that, I spent 18 years running a law enforcement firm, surrounding myself with people with guns, detectives, police officers, and I taught at the police academy. I wanted to make sure nobody could ever hurt me again. And I realized that and through this meditation, I'm realizing that it's about safety and wanting to be, so what I've been doing is, in the interim, I had been working on wanting to be recognized for my brain, not my beauty. And so I use weight to keep people away from me, to be invisible to, to men, and would only come out with what I wrote um, or what I would present because I would be the brains behind the scene and would, would be the problem solver. And nobody would know I made all the decisions but I was happy hiding before. But I'm ready to come out. I'm ready to take that step. And it's through this meditation that you've encouraged us to do, another task to learn, <laughs> that I'm, I'm realizing that safety is my fear. That's my, my deal. Wow. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you said so much there. I don't even want to repeat it because I don't want to add to it. I, I used weight. How did she say it? I used weight to keep people away from me? Yeah. To hide. To keep, see me for my brain. Uh -huh. Oh my God, that is so, but you know what? 
that was equally as powerful as the revelation that Chantel had three weeks ago. Chantel okay. said, I use my curls to hide behind. Yeah. Yeah. She, she smashed that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think I'm pretty? High? I'm a hide behind man. Don't get to know me. It's like my hair. Mm, mm, mm. Felicia said, you said the truth. Thank you for sharing, Pamela. I just, I know we're supposed to end, but can we just let that saturate the call just for a little bit? Something told me to make it go last. I'll be listening. I'll be listening to the, <laughs> to the spirit. That's what PJ would say. I ain't yelling. I'll be listening to the spirit, PJ. I'll be listening. I'll be listening. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. My, 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 my. And I'm so glad you're uh, having this uh, discussion. I'm ready to stop hiding. I want to come out. And this is such a great form. This team we've assembled. It's such a safe yeah. place. And we're all growing together professionally and personally at the same time. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, the time is right to, to come out. You know, I would. I was at first I was going to charge people for this class, but it's gotten so good that this y'all don't know it, but this is gonna be on the website for free. And I'm gonna give it to the world for free. Yes, because y'all have I mean, come on, all this thing girl rich stuff. It's it's been a journey. This has been wow. This has been good. This has been good. DJ, say something before Pam make us all cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, mean, she just, I ain't never heard nobody say I use weight. Hmm. Push people away. God, oh yeah. I don't even know how to process that. Huh? Huh. You help somebody, Pam. <laughs> you help somebody. Dare say you are his hero. Hero. Yeah. Well, do you ready? Oh, sorry. Hold on. All right, because y'all, you know, I've been zooming in on you. You know, I can. You know, you know, dog on well. I'm in tune. You know, I'm in tune. You ready? All right. <laughs> Give it to us. First, I was kind of pissed off. <laughs> but <it's> a, <laughs> What's new? What's new? <laughs> but it was like a eureka moment because I'm like, that's what's going on. I use my kids as an excuse to not show up. Mm! Girl, you better talk. Wait a minute. Pause. Wait a minute. Pause. Pause. Jump in there. Jump in there. Jump in there. I love you. Jump on that sword. You know. No, tell her she says the same thing you used to do. Now, if she gonna cry, you gonna cry. She ain't gonna cry by herself. No. I used to do the same exact thing. I used my son as an excuse for everything. Why I couldn't get any work done at home. Why I couldn't go here. Why I couldn't go there. Why I couldn't grow up within myself. Why I couldn't do anything personal development wise because of my son. Oh, he's this or he's that. All in all, I was just using him to hide. Because what I was doing it scared the crap out of me. So I used him as an excuse. Okay, well, I can't do this today because I need to take care of my son. But what I was doing the most I was hurting my son more than anything because I was using him to prove a point to the world. 
I was using him as an excuse to show that I was a great mother. I was using him as an excuse to show that I don't suck. I was using him as an excuse to show that I'm better than you. And in the process of doing all that, I was hurting him. I was hurting myself. And I was hurting everyone around me. And I had to, I had to let him go in order for me not to use him as an excuse. And when I say let him go, I had to stop using him as a crutch and grow up within myself and understand that my own insecurities, my own flaws, my own personal development was what I needed to work on in order to be the good mother, in order to show the world just how great I am. But I used my son as a, I, I used him as a weapon is what I actually did. Against yourself. Against myself as well as against, no, I used my son as a weapon against myself. Okay. She used her son as a weapon against herself. Every time something good would go in her life, she used her son to destroy it. Some mothers that I've coached, they have the hero complex. They keep their children sick or they keep their children in bad situations so they can prove to their father they're a good mother. They endanger their child. Shut up, Anton. They hold back their... Come on now. <laughs> they hold back their child, the intelligence, the let them wear pampers to 12, all that stuff, just so when they go to daddy house, kids sleep in the bed all by itself. Over mama house, kids sleep on the chest before. All because they got to prove to the dad they are actually a good mother. Like you, like you didn't say or prove to my mama. I'm a better mother than she is. That's what Diana just said. Mm. And Wadi, you can continue now. Is this going to go up to the world? <laughs> it is, which is why I saved you. <laughs> like I saved Dave. <laughs> <No. Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> It's just crazy because I'm like, that's, ex that's exactly it. That's exactly it. I've put myself, like, I can't think of any other excuse I've used. I, and I didn't even know that it was, it was something that I was constantly using the excuse of my children. And it's like, I'm noble, you know, I'm just being a good mom. I just want to yeah. take care of my children and make sure I'm doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. But to tell you the truth, I had an amazing opportunity like brought into my life and it scared the hell out of me. And like, cause I'm like, this changes my life. <laughs> what, what, what is this? This, it's this kind of, and I'm like, I can't. Because <laughs> who's going to watch the kids? <laughs> but like, it was right after I had that, that I'm like, I wouldn't allow myself to just say, okay, I'm scared of taking on more responsibilities. I'm scared of like hard work. <laughs> I can, <laughs> and like, it's just crazy because now that I'm put in a position where my kids aren't with me right now and they're safe. They're okay, but I'm still trying to now find a way to kind of like, what, what else can I hold? Oh, now it's that I don't have my kids and I'm too depressed. I can't, <laughs> you know, trying to pull away. And 
I just feel really liberated right now. I feel really liberated Good. because I'm like, I see what I need to do making going forward Good. is to make a different decision than what I would normally Good. do. And it's a, I feel great. I feel great. I feel Good. really great. Thank Good. you. Diana, <laughs> she said thank you. You are very welcome. I'm so happy you, I'm so happy that came to you sooner than it came to me because I was on the verge of completely ruining my son's life. Wow. He, I was creating a child who I, I was creating a child that sits at home as a grown man playing PlayStation in his drawers waiting for his woman to do something for him. That's what I was creating because I had the hero complex. I'm so happy for you. Like you, I have no clue how happy I am for you. I applaud you. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Good, good. Now, I, did, I said I coached someone with a hero complex. You admit it. All right. I just want you to know <laughs> that ain't what I said. Well, good. This class would be almost free. Yeah. Almost free. Let me say that. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, as our chief sales officer is gonna let me know. Almost free. Almost free. We still gonna give away some stuff for free though. A lot of stuff. All right, almost free. But not this one. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have ripped your skin off enough. You got Dave's number, right? Yeah. All right. In the moment I end the session, I need you to call Dave. Dave. I need you to do something. You got five minutes with me to spill them guts. Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. Yes, sir. You ready now? All right. Give it yeah, to us right. now. We want to see. We'll see you cry. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on. He going to another room. Right. Sir, that's good. That's good. I want it. I want it now. I want my Oprah moment. <laughs> now, you want to be like R. Kelly and do it like a whole fool and I sit here real calm? Yeah. Unbothered. <laughs> David. David. All right. All right. All right. Oh. The jokes, jokes, jokes. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> you were getting ready to tell me in a room full of people why you put on his burden and relieved him of it. I, I, I honestly like. I, I I guess the the uh, the uh, the uh, the abuse with it was kind of that. Um, how I want to say it. Um, I mean to 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 really make a long story short, he was very verbally and physically and mentally abusive to me for whatever reason I, I i'm you know even at this age like i'm still trying to figure that out though i i, I don't know you know what i'm saying like he even stayed with me and i and it was like the worst you know i've you know I, like you said i've, I've semi for, for giving him to 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 move on to that stage but um it's beautiful hold on real quick hold on real quick let me let me let me let me get you from traveling in a place i don't want you to go and travel to my vibration i did an interview today with a billionaire on my podcast mm -hmm. dwayne clark jr no is that is it dwayne, j. dwayne j clark dwayne j clark and his mentor was wayne dyer 
And Wayne Dyer asked him a question that I'm getting ready to ask you. He's complaining about his dad. And Wayne Dyer says, oh, my God, your dad was such a beautiful man. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. I'm telling you, he, he was a drunk and he beat me up. He's 62 years old now. He beat me up. And he did all these great things. I mean, all these bad things. And Wayne Dyer went, man, he really did an amazing job raising you. And I just, hey, no, that is not what I just said. Don't you hear what he said? And then he asked the next preceding question. I'm getting ready to ask you, Dave. How are you with your child? Oh, uh, my kids, uh, I am. Are you abusive? No, I'm not. I'm not. Not okay. at all. So then your dad taught you how not to be abusive. Right. He taught you. Would you say, not in disrespect, but would you say that you have done a better job with your kids versus what you would, what would happen to you? No disrespect, but just observing data. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. He sure parented you correctly, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. He taught you what you needed to be in reverse. Right. Let me let me help you, brother. So that's what I was going to say after the call. And let me help all of y'all. Then we out of here. Let me help you. As real as I can give it to you. I don't do drugs as my parents did. They taught me how to be drug free by giving me up because of drugs. Mm -hmm. I raised my children because my parents did not raise me. I got a lot of money because they didn't have enough to feed me. They made me a fantastic parent a fantastic citizen of my government and they did all in reverse only thing you need to do Dave and you need to do Grace is forgive your father because what you're holding on to it ain't worked for you yet is that fair? and since it didn't work for you and since it ain't going in your bank account, and since it doesn't make you a better person anymore, it made you a better father, made you a better daughter, Grace, but now what got you here, Marsha Goldsmith, won't get you there. Let it go. Forgive. Stop the mean making machine that you're making. So what your mother didn't, your mother didn't raise you right, F-O-D. Deanna, so what? Let it go. You know why? They did the best they could with what they had. And it ain't your job to stand in judgment of it. It's your job to plant better seeds so you can create a better quality of life. Antonio T. Smith Jr., you can plant better. You can dominate. Thank you, everybody. Especially for letting me go over time and ripping some skin off some folk and inspiring the world. Appreciate y'all. Thank you.